Long Last is finally here, an episode on Ember.js. This is a JavaScript framework for building rich client-side applications that just recently hit Release Candidate 1. Well, let's see what's involved in using this in a new Rails application. Here we'll be building the same application I've done in the past. This gives us a nice point of comparison with other frameworks in previous episodes, including AngularJS, Meteor, and Backbone. This is a simple raffling application where we can add new entries into the raffle and then draw random winners. And you can draw multiple winners and the most recent one is highlighted in red. Well, let's get started making this from scratch. First, I'll create a new Rails app called Raffler. And I'll open that up. Now here's kind of a cool trick. If you're building a single page application like we are here, you can actually use the application controller as the main page. Uh, you can just make a new views directory called application and then make a new file in here called index.html.erb. And I'll just leave this file blank because Ember will fill it in. Now in our routes file, uh, let's make a new root route that goes to the application index action. We don't really need to define the method. It'll just use that template directly. Oh, and I still need to remove the public uh, index file. Now, if this were a serious production application, I'd probably make a separate controller for this just to avoid the unwanted template inheritance, but I thought I'd just show you this neat little trick for uh, single page applications. Okay, to complete the setup of this application, I'm just going to paste in some styling so we don't have to worry about it throughout the rest of this episode. So I'll make a CSS file here and just paste in some code. Now when I visit my Rails application, I get this blank page, which means we're ready to add the functionality through Ember. I'll be doing this through the official Ember Rails gem, which integrates nicely with the asset pipeline. Alternatively though, you can download the source code from the site and include it manually. So going into the gem file, I will add the Ember Rails gem there, and of course run the bundle command to install it. And next run the included generator called Ember Bootstrap. And you can see this generated several files under app assets JavaScripts, which we will take a look at, and also give us some instructions to add this line to the application config. I'll do that first, going into my development config file, I'll just paste that line there into the bottom, and same for the test environment, just in case I have some integration level testing. And for the production environment, we'll use the production version, which is more optimized. By the way, the Ember Rails gem is under some pretty active development, so I wouldn't be surprised if these steps aren't necessary in the future. Anyway, going under App Assets JavaScripts, we have our generated files. Let's first check out the application JS because it has some new entries in the manifest, including Ember, Ember Data, and Handlebars, which it uses for templates. And this added a new line here to create a new Ember app called Raffler, and this will also be used as sort of a namespace throughout the rest of our JavaScript application. Now you'll probably want to remove this dangling require tree line. Uh, all the JavaScript files for our app are now included through this Raffler manifest file. So if we check this out, we can see each of those files are included with a require tree as necessary. Now you may have noticed that each of these generated files are just plain JavaScript files. Uh, there is a pull request to add CoffeeScript support to this gem, but it's not quite there yet. So uh, for now, I'm just going to uh, convert these files to CoffeeScript manually because that's what I prefer to work with. By the way, if you want to learn more about CoffeeScript, check out episode 267. I'll do the rest off camera. There we go, much better. Now looking at all these files that were generated, it looks like there's a lot to an Ember application. So let's take this one step at a time, starting with templates. This application handlebars template was generated for us and it will be rendered automatically by Ember and inserted into the body tag. I'm just going to delete this default content and let's make a div here with the ID of container for some styling. And I'll insert an H1 tag calling it Raffler. Now if I reload the page here, I can see that template is rendered and inserted here. Now Handlebars is a template language similar to Mustache, which I covered in episode 295. It allows you to output dynamic content using double curly braces. Now Ember provides some built-in uh, helpers, which you can use through this as well. Let's use one to insert a text field at the top of our raffler. We can call view to render out a view object, and there's one built-in called ember.textField, and there are other options you can pass in here as well. One particularly useful one is called value binding, and we can set this to a property that we want to bind the value of the text field to. Let's call this new entry name, and uh, then we can output that property if we want, like this. Let's give this a try. Uh, we now have a text field, and you can see as I type that the value is being automatically updated and inserted on this page. Really cool to have two-way binding like this. 
Now the context of an Ember template is the controller. So in this case, we have our application template with our new entry name property. And that means that is going to be set on the application controller. We have our class set up here. Now this also applies to actions that you trigger from the template. For example, when we submit a new entry, let's tell it to trigger a function on the controller by specifying the action property to our text field and let's call it add entry. Now we just need to define that function on our controller. So going into here, let's make a new uh, uh, add entry function. And for now, let's just alert the content of our new entry uh, name property. And let's also reset this value to an empty string so that it clears out the form field. Now this will actually not work because Ember bindings will not automatically detect uh, setting properties directly like this. Instead, you need to go through the get and set functions for each of the properties that you want to access. So in this case, we'll uh, use the get uh, and set functions here. And that way we'll be able to access it and have the bindings update whenever we set the value. And if I try this out, and hit return, then it's going to show us that alert dialog and clear out the form field and the bindings worked. Next, let's make it so that when we submit an entry, it adds it to a list below. So going to our controller, let's add a new property here called entries and have it default to an empty array. Now, instead of alerting our entry name, let's add it to our entries list. And I'll do that with a call to push and let's give it a name, a property. Now push is actually not going to work because it's not going to update the bindings uh, through the view. So we're going to have to use a function that Ember actually adds to all array objects called push object. And that way uh, Ember will detect this change and update the bindings. So now we just need to go into our template and output that list. And I'll do this in a UL tag. And for each item in the entries array, then we want to output a list item. And we can do that by calling uh, pound sign each in handlebars and saying we want to loop through the entries array. And that'll become the context within this each block here. So that means each entry object, we can just output the name like this. Now let's give this a try. Uh, for each entry we add here, it shows up in the list and it's updated automatically through the bindings. Yay! Now, so far, we've been building everything through our application template and controller, which Ember isn't really designed to do. Instead, this should act more like a layout template in Rails, where it should contain everything that's consistent through the different states of our application. Now, this app is so simple, it only really has one state, but it's still a good idea to move the majority of this off into a separate template and controller. So let's make a new template uh, called entries.handlebars. And I'll paste that same template code in here that we're moving over. Now we also need to set up an entries controller to handle this behavior like we did in our application controller. So let's move all this logic into a separate controller to handle that. Uh, let's call it entries controller.js.coffee. So this should work like our application controller did, just called entries controller. Now we're not quite done with this extraction yet. We still need to have Ember render out our entries from within our application template. And we can do that with a call to outlet, which almost works like yield and a layout in Rails. It's going to render out the template and controller based on the current route. This means we'll need to define our route, which we can do under the router coffee script file. And we can add a new route entry into here and pass it the name of the template, which is entries, and followed by an optional path argument which we want to set to a root route. So that way it becomes the default template that is rendered when we visit our application. Now, if we did everything correctly, our application should behave the same and it looks like it works. Now, one benefit of making this extraction is that we can further customize our entries controller. We know this is uh, designed to manage entries, which is an array of records. And Ember provides a custom controller for doing just this called array controller. So let's have it subclass the Ember array controller instead. This makes the controller itself behave like an array by delegating various function calls to its internal content array. That means we no longer need this entries uh, setting and we can call push objects directly on the controller, which will add it to the internal array. However, to get this to work, we need to set the initial array for this controller and that is often done through the router. We can customize what happens when we visit our entries route by defining a raffler dot 
entries route class and have it inherit from ember.route and let's call extend on this. Now if we define a function on here called setup controller, it's going to pass in the controller instance, which allows us to prepare it to be rendered out. And what we want to do is set the internal array, and that's at the content property, and let's just set this to an empty array for now, so we can push to it. Now one possible point of confusion here is that a route in Ember is almost more like a controller action in Rails, where it's preparing content to be rendered depending upon the route parameters. By the way, there is a routes directory set up here where this class could go, but I kind of prefer to keep it under a single router file until it gets more complex to warrant moving it out into separate files. Now, we aren't quite done yet here. We do have an entries controller with an initial array. However, we also need to configure our entries template because this is looping through the entries array, which we no longer have. Instead, we could just loop through the controller directly because it sort of behaves like the array and delegates to that so we can access our entry objects through that. Let's see if our application is still working here. If we add any name to the list, that still works. So our entries are now being managed by the array controller. What I want to do next here is add a draw winner button to select a random entry and mark them as a winner. So back in our entries template, let's add a button into here and call it draw winner. And then to trigger a function on the controller, when you click a button, you can pass in an action helper and then pass in the name of the action that you want to trigger. So in this case, let's call it draw winner. And then going to the controller, I'll define that draw winner function. And this we want to select a random entry who is not currently a winner. So let's gather up a pool of entries to choose from, and there are several enumerable functions that Ember adds to arrays that can help us out. One is called reject property, and that will loop through all the entries that are available and reject them all that do not have a winner property that is truthy. And then let's check the uh, length on this to see if we found any entries to uh, choose from. And then we need to grab a random entry from this pool, and I'm going to paste in the code to do this. Uh, this will just use math.random to fetch a random element in an array, and let's save that in a variable. And let's mark him as a winner, like this. Lastly, we need to display if an entry is a winner or not, so in this list here, let's add an if condition in handlebars. You can do it just like if, and then say winner, because that'll use the winner property on that entry and then slash if to end it. And I'll add a span tag in here with the class of winner for styling and call it winner. Let's give this a try, reloading the page. And we have our draw winner button. Let's add a few entries into here and click draw winner. And nothing seems to happen. In a situation like this, it's a good idea to first check the console to make sure that there weren't any JavaScript errors. If there weren't any, then you may want to check out the bindings because you may have updated something in a way that the bindings couldn't detect to update the view. In this case, the problem is in our controller where we're setting the entry winner property to true directly. Instead, we should go through the set function to use the bindings. So uh, let's do it like this. Now this will not work on our entry object because it's just a plain JavaScript object. Instead, we want this to be an Ember object because right here where we're calling push object, this is just generating a JavaScript object but instead we want to generate an ember object, which we can do by calling ember.object.create, and this will allow us to set properties through the get and set uh, functions. That means that the bindings will keep track of it and update the view accordingly. Let's try this again, reloading our page, and now when we click draw winner, it marks an entry as a winner. Lastly, I want it so that it highlights that last uh, drawn winner in red. To do this, we can add the class of highlight to our winner text, which will mark it red through the styling. However, we want to do this dynamically and only for the most recent winner. If you want to make HTML properties dynamic, you can wrap them in a call to bind adder, and then we can specify the class here. What this will do is look for the winner and the highlight properties on our entry object, and only set those as the class if the property values are true. So back in our controller, when we set our winner property, we can also set a highlight property. So that way that class will show up in the HTML. However, we want to clear out all the old highlight properties whenever we draw a winner. So let's uh, use a, another enumerable function that uh, Ember provides called set each. And then we can set the highlight to false for each of the entries before we draw the winner. Now let's see if this works. I'll add some entries 
And now when we click draw winner, it will highlight the most recent winner in red and clear that uh, highlight whenever it uh, selects a new winner. That works. So this application is coming along nicely and we've done most of the functionality for the client side. However, this data isn't persistent at all. If we reload the page, it goes away. In part two, I'll show you how to persist this through the Rails app using Ember data, along with a few other things such as view objects and computed properties. In the meantime, I encourage you to check out the guides and API documentation on Ember. There's a lot of great information there. Well, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next part.